The phone buzzed relentlessly on the nightstand, shattering the, tra the tranquil silence of the night. Olivia groaned, squinting at the caller ID in the dim glow. Dad, what's wrong? The sound of her father's trembling voice instantly jolted her awake. Olivia, there's something off about Nico. I can feel it in my bones. Nico. The name sent a chill down her spine. Aaron's fiancé, the supposed perfect match their family had embraced. What do you mean, Dad? Did something happen? No, no. Martin sighed, the weight of his concerns palpable. It's just a gut feeling. But it's eating me up inside, kiddo. Olivia pinched the bridge of her nose, her father's words echoing in her mind. Mere instinct wasn't enough to condemn a man, but she knew better than to dismiss Martin's intuition outright. I'll look into it, Dad. Don't worry. The call ended, but Olivia found no solace in the silence that followed. The nagging seed of doubt had been planted, its roots digging deeper with every passing second. She had to know the truth, for her family's sake. Aaron's elated voice replayed in her mind from their last conversation. He's just perfect, Olivia. You'll see. But would she? Olivia tossed and turned, her thoughts a tangled web of uncertainty. As the first rays of dawn peeked through the curtains, Olivia made a decision. She booked a flight to Denver, her hometown, determined to observe Nico firsthand and unravel the mystery surrounding her sister's fiancé. The familiar sights and sounds of Denver greeted her like an embrace from an old friend. Yet, beneath the comforting familiarity, a sense of unease lingered. Olivia steeled herself, knowing that the path ahead would be anything but easy. The family gathering that evening was a whirlwind of laughter and chatter, but Olivia's focus remained fixed on Nico. Every word, every gesture, was scrutinized, her analytical mind searching for the slightest inconsistency. Nico regaled the table with tales of his business exploits, his charisma captivating the room. I've handled bigger deals than this back in my days in Chicago, he boasted, a hint of arrogance seeping through. Olivia couldn't shake the feeling that something was amiss, a discordant note in the symphony of his storytelling. The more she observed, the more her suspicions grew, fueled by her father's unwavering instinct. As the night drew to a close, Olivia found herself in the backyard, her mind a whirlwind of doubts and questions. The cool night air did little to quell the burning determination within her. She would get to the bottom of this, no matter the cost. The following morning, I found myself meandering through the familiar streets of my hometown Denver. Each step stirred up a whirlwind of memories, both cherished and bittersweet. But today, my purpose transcended mere nostalgia. I was on a mission to unravel the truth about Nico. As I approached the quaint family diner, a wave of comforting familiarity washed over me. The bell chimed cheerfully as I stepped inside, the aroma of freshly brewed coffee and buttery pancakes filling the air. In the corner booth, a familiar figure waved me over, her face beaming with excitement. Olivia! Aaron exclaimed, enveloping me in a warm embrace. I'm so glad you're here. I can't wait for you to meet Nico. I forced a smile, pushing aside the lingering doubts that gnawed at my conscience. I can't wait either, I lied, silently vowing to keep an open mind. As if on cue, a tall, well-groomed man appeared, his smile as polished as his appearance. You must be Olivia, he said, extending his hand. Aaron hasn't stopped talking about you. I studied his face, searching for any hint of deception, but found none. His easy charm and charisma were undeniable, making it easy to understand why Aaron had fallen so deeply for him. It's great to finally meet you, Nico. I replied, my voice betraying none of the suspicion that simmered beneath the surface. Over the course of our breakfast, Nico regaled us with tales of his business ventures, each story more impressive than the last. Erin hung on to every word, her eyes shining with adoration. He's just perfect, Olivia, she gushed, oblivious to the subtle inconsistencies that caught my attention. I've never been happier. I nodded, forcing another smile as Nico's gaze met mine. In that fleeting moment, I could have sworn I saw a flicker of something sinister lurking behind his charming facade. As we parted ways, Erin wrapped her arms around me, her joy palpable. I'm so glad you're here, she whispered. This means the world to me. I hugged her back, my heart heavy with the weight of the doubts that threatened to shatter her happiness. But I couldn't shake the feeling that something wasn't right, a feeling that only grew stronger with each passing moment. That night, as I lay awake in the familiar comfort of my childhood bedroom, 
my mind raced with unanswered questions. Was I simply being paranoid, or was there truly something darker lurking beneath Nico's polished exterior? One thing was certain. I wouldn't rest until I had uncovered the truth, no matter how painful it might be. For Aaron's sake, and for the sake of our family, I had to know. The family dinner was a lively affair, with laughter and conversation flowing as freely as the wine. But beneath the jovial atmosphere, an undercurrent of tension simmered, fueled by my growing suspicions about Nico. As the meal progressed, I found myself scrutinizing his every move, searching for any hint of deception. The way he spoke, the way he carried himself. It all seemed too polished, too carefully crafted. So, Nico, my father began, his voice cutting through the chatter. Aaron tells us you have quite the impressive business background. Nico's smile didn't falter as he launched into another tale of his supposed exploits. Absolutely, Martin. I've handled bigger deals than this back in my days in Chicago. I couldn't help but notice the way his eyes darted ever so slightly, as if he were gauging our reactions. A flicker of unease rippled through me, but I remained silent, determined to observe and gather as much information as possible. As the evening wore on, the cracks in Nico's facade became more apparent. His stories didn't quite add up, and his responses to certain questions seemed rehearsed, almost too perfect. It was during a lull in the conversation that I seized my opportunity. So, Nico, I began, my voice calm but laced with intention. How did you and Aaron first meet? A brief pause, a millisecond too long, before he responded. It was at a charity event in the city, he said smoothly. Love at first sight, you could say. But something in his tone didn't sit right with me. There was a hollowness to his words, a disconnect that set off alarm bells in my mind. As the night drew to a close, I found myself alone in the backyard, desperately needing a moment of solitude to process everything I had observed. The cool night air did little to quell the storm of emotions raging within me. Lost in thought, I nearly jumped out of my skin when a familiar voice cut through the silence. Penny for your thoughts, sis. I turned to find Aaron standing there, her expression a mixture of concern and curiosity. It's nothing, I lied, forcing a smile just processing everything. Aaron's eyes narrowed, and for a moment I thought she might press further. But then, her features softened, and she enveloped me in a warm embrace. I'm so glad you're here, she murmured. It means everything to me that you're a part of this. As I hugged her back, a wave of guilt washed over me. How could I shatter her happiness with my doubts and suspicions? Yet the nagging feeling that something wasn't right continued to gnaw at me. A persistent itch, I couldn't scratch. As we parted ways, I caught one last glimpse of Nico through the kitchen window. He was on the phone, his back turned, but there was something about the way he carried himself that sent a chill down my spine. In that moment, I knew I couldn't let this go. For better or worse, I had to uncover the truth, no matter where it led or how painful it might be. The nagging doubt had taken root, festering in the back of my mind like a malignant growth. I knew I couldn't shake this feeling until I uncovered the truth about Nico, no matter how unpleasant it might be. With a steely resolve, I turned to the one resource I knew could shed light on his past, the Internet. Hours melted away as I scoured through public records, my fingers flying across the keyboard with feverish determination. At first, the results were innocuous. A few mentions of business deals, a charitable donation here and there— but then, buried beneath layers of seemingly benign information, I stumbled upon something that made my blood run cold. Court records, detailing a string of fraudulent activities and legal battles, all linked to an alias that matched Nico's description. The details were damning, forgery, embezzlement, and a web of deceit that spanned years. My heart pounded in my chest as I printed out the documents, the weight of the evidence nearly suffocating me. This was it the proof I had been searching for, the confirmation that my instincts had been right all along. But even as relief washed over me, a new wave of dread took its place. How could I confront Nico with this information? And more importantly, how could I break the news to Aaron, whose world would undoubtedly come crashing down? The decision was made for me when later that evening I overheard a hushed conversation between Nico and Aaron in the kitchen. Make sure your old man doesn't poke around too much, Nico's voice hissed, laced with a venom I had never heard before. My blood ran cold, 
and I knew in that moment that I had to act, for Aaron's sake, and for the safety of our entire family. Without hesitation, I dialed the one number I knew I could trust. Dean, my childhood friend who had become a respected detective in the local police force. Dean, it's Olivia, I whispered urgently into the phone. I need your help. I've uncovered something about Nico, and it's not good. There was a pause on the other end, and then Dean's voice, steady and reassuring. Tell me everything. Over the next hour, I laid out the damning evidence I had uncovered, my words tumbling out in a torrent of fear and determination. Dean listened intently, his silence punctuated only by the occasional question or murmur of concern. We've seen his type before, Dean finally said, his voice grave. Let's tread carefully, but prepare for the worst. As I hung up the phone, a sense of relief washed over me. I wasn't alone in this fight anymore. With Dean by my side, I knew we stood a chance of exposing Nico's true nature before it was too late. But even as I steeled myself for the battle ahead, a part of me couldn't help but mourn for the innocence that was about to be shattered. Aaron's world was about to be turned upside down, and there was nothing I could do to soften the blow. All I could do was hope that, in the end, the truth would set us all free, no matter how painful it might be. With Dean on board, I felt a renewed sense of determination coursing through my veins. No longer was I fighting this battle alone. I had an ally, someone I could trust implicitly. We met the next day at a nondescript diner on the outskirts of town, the kind of place where conversations could happen unnoticed. Dean slid into the booth across from me, his expression grim. I've been digging into Nico's past, he said, sliding a folder across the table, and let's just say your instincts were spot on. I flipped open the file, my eyes widening as I took in the damning evidence Dean had uncovered. Financial records, witness statements, even surveillance photos, it was all there, painting a picture of a man who had made a career out of deception and fraud. "'How did you get all this?' I asked, my voice barely above a whisper. Dean's lips curled into a tight smile. "'Let's just say I have my ways.' As I poured over the documents, a sickening realization washed over me. Nico was no ordinary con man. He was a master manipulator, a predator who had left a trail of broken lives and shattered dreams in his wake. We have to stop him, I said, my voice trembling with a mixture of anger and determination. Before he does the same thing to Aaron and our family. Dean nodded solemnly. Don't worry, we'll put an end to this, but we have to be smart about it. Guys like Nico are slippery. We can't give him any chance to slip away. Over the next few days, Dean and I formulated a plan, meticulously laying the groundwork for Nico's downfall. We knew we had to tread carefully, gathering as much evidence as possible before making our move. As the pre-wedding festivities kicked into high gear, I found myself playing the role of the supportive sister, all the while keeping a watchful eye on Nico's every move. It was a delicate balancing act, one that tested the limits of my resolve. But through it all, one thought kept me going— the knowledge that I was doing this for Aaron, to protect her from the devastating consequences of Nico's deceit. Finally, the night of the rehearsal dinner arrived, and I knew our moment had come. As the guests mingled and laughter filled the air, I caught Dean's eye from across the room. With a slight nod, he slipped away, setting our plan in motion. Minutes later, the sound of commotion from the hallway cut through the revelry. Nico's face drained of color as Dean strode into the room, flanked by two uniformed officers. Nico Delgado, Dean's voice boomed, his expression one of grim satisfaction. You're under arrest for fraud, identity theft, and a slew of other charges. The parade ends today. Time seemed to slow as Nico's true nature was laid bare for all to see. Aaron's anguished cries pierced the stunned silence, her world crumbling around her. As the officers led Nico away in handcuffs, I could see the hatred burning in his eyes, a hatred directed squarely at me. But in that moment, I knew I had done the right thing, no matter the personal cost. Because in the end, the truth was all that mattered, and Nico's web of lies had finally been unraveled, once and for all. The days following Nico's arrest were a whirlwind of chaos and heartbreak. Aaron, consumed by a grief so raw and visceral, retreated into a shell of silence, unable to process the betrayal that had shattered her world. As for me, I found myself caught between a sense of relief and a nagging guilt. While I knew I had done the right thing in exposing Nico's true nature, 
the sight of my sister's anguish was almost too much to bear. It was during one of the pre-wedding parties, a lavish affair that now felt like a hollow mockery, that I found myself face to face with the man who had orchestrated this deceit. Nico stood alone, his once charming demeanor replaced by a cold, calculating stare. As our eyes met, a shiver ran down my spine, but I refused to back down. Olivia, he said, his voice dripping with disdain, I should have known you'd be the one to stick your nose where it didn't belong. I steeled myself, refusing to let his words rattle me. Cut the act, Nico. It's over. A mirthless chuckle escaped his lips. Oh, it's far from over. You have no idea what you've just unleashed. Before I could respond, he leaned in closer, his breath hot against my ear. I'll make sure you regret this, one way or another. A wave of revulsion washed over me, and I recoiled, my fists clenched at my sides. Is that a threat? Nico's eyes narrowed, his lips curling into a contemptuous sneer. Call it whatever you want. But mark my words, you haven't seen the last of me. With that, he turned on his heel and disappeared into the crowd, leaving me shaken and seething with anger. As the party raged on around me, I found myself seeking solace in the quiet of the gardens, desperate for a moment of respite from the chaos that had consumed my life. It was there, amidst the fragrant blooms, that Dean found me, his expression etched with concern. "'You okay?' he asked, his voice low and reassuring. I let out a long sigh, the weight of Nico's threat still lingering. "'I'm fine. Just rattled, I guess.' Dean's brow furrowed. "'What did he say to you?' Reluctantly, I recounted the encounter, my words tinged with a hint of fear that I couldn't quite shake. To my surprise, Dean's expression hardened, his jaw clenched with determination. "'That son of a bitch,' he growled. "'Don't worry, Olivia. He's not getting away with this.' I nodded, grateful for Dean's unwavering support. "'I know. But what if he's right? What if this is just the beginning?' Dean placed a reassuring hand on my shoulder. "'Then we'll be ready. We've got the law on our side, and we're not backing down. Not now, not ever.' As I gazed into his resolute eyes, I felt a surge of strength wash over me. Nico's threats were hollow. He was a cornered animal, lashing out in desperation, and I would be damned if I let him win. From that moment on, a newfound determination took hold. I may have exposed Nico's deceit, but the battle was far from over. He had threatened my family, my very way of life, and I would stop at nothing to ensure he paid for his crimes. As the party drew to a close, I caught a glimpse of Aaron, her eyes red-rimmed and haunted. In that moment, I vowed to myself that I would do whatever it took to protect her, to shield her from the fallout of Nico's actions. Because in the end, family was all that mattered. And I would fight like hell to keep ours intact, no matter the cost. The day of the wedding rehearsal dawned like a harbinger of reckoning. As I stepped into the ornate church, the weight of the past few weeks bore down upon me, threatening to crush me beneath its weight. Erin sat in the front pew, her eyes hollow and lifeless, a mere shadow of the vibrant woman I had known. My heart ached for her, for the dreams she had so foolishly pinned on a man who had proven himself to be nothing more than a master of deception. As the rehearsal began, I found myself scanning the crowd, searching for any sign of Nico. Part of me hoped he would have the audacity to show his face, to give me the chance to confront him one last time. But he was nowhere to be seen, and for a fleeting moment, I wondered if perhaps he had simply cut his losses and fled. That notion was swiftly dispelled when Dean caught my eye from the back of the church, his expression grave. With a barely perceptible nod, he slipped out of the side door, his movements purposeful and determined. My heart raced as the minutes ticked by, the rehearsal proceeding in a haze of artificial smiles and forced pleasantries. Just when I thought I could bear the tension no longer, the sound of commotion from the vestibule shattered the fragile illusion. All eyes turned as Dean strode back into the church, flanked by two uniformed officers. In their grasp, a bedraggled and defiant Nico struggled against his restraints, his once-polished veneer now cracked and peeling away. Nico Delgado, Dean's voice boomed, echoing through the sanctum like a thunderclap. You're under arrest for fraud, identity theft, and a slew of other charges. The parade ends today. Time seemed to slow as the words hung in the air, their weight pressing down upon us all. Erin let out a guttural wail, her anguish reverberating through the church like a physical force. Nico, for his part, 
fixed me with a look of pure, unadulterated hatred. You, he spat, his words laced with venom. You did this. You'll pay for this, you bitch. Before I could react, Dean was upon him, wrenching him back with a savage force. That's enough out of you, he growled, his grip unwavering. As the officers led Nico away, his threats and curses echoing through the halls, a deafening silence descended upon the church. All eyes turned to me, a kaleidoscope of emotions playing across their faces. Shock, relief, and in the case of my father, grudging respect. It was Aaron's gaze that cut deepest, though. Her eyes, once so full of love and joy, now burned with a betrayal so profound, it threatened to consume us both. How could you? she whispered, her voice trembling with barely contained anguish. He was my everything. I opened my mouth to respond, but the words caught in my throat. What could I say? That I had done what was necessary to protect her, to shield her from a life of lies and heartbreak? In the end, I said nothing. There were no words that could salve the wound I had inflicted, no platitudes that could undo the damage wrought by Nico's deceit. As the church emptied, the echoes of Aaron's sobs lingering in the air— I found myself alone with my thoughts, a maelstrom of conflicting emotions swirling within me. I had won. That much was certain. But at what cost? The collateral damage was immeasurable, and I couldn't help but wonder if the price had been too high. Yet, as I gazed up at the towering stained-glass windows, their kaleidoscopic hues casting a warm glow across my face, I knew in my heart that I had done the right thing. Nico's web of lies had been unraveled, his reign of terror brought to an end, and as painful as the consequences might be, at least now we could begin to heal. The aftermath of Nico's exposure was a whirlwind of emotions, each day bringing a new set of challenges and revelations. As the true extent of his deceit came to light, our family found itself navigating the treacherous waters of betrayal and heartbreak. Aaron, once the embodiment of joy and laughter, retreated into a shell of grief and anguish. Her world had been shattered, her dreams reduced to ashes by the man she had loved and trusted. I ate to comfort her, to soothe the wounds inflicted by Nico's lies, but words seemed inadequate in the face of such profound pain. Dad, ever the stoic pillar of strength, struggled to mask his own turmoil. The guilt of having doubted his instincts weighed heavily upon him, a burden he carried in silence. It was only in the quiet moments, when his guard was down, that I glimpsed the depth of his remorse. As for me, I found solace in the knowledge that I had done the right thing, no matter how arduous the path had been. Nico's reign of deception had come to an end, and while the cost had been steep, at least now we could begin to rebuild our lives on a foundation of truth. It was during one of those rare, quiet evenings that Dad sought me out, his eyes shining with a mixture of pride and gratitude. Olivia, he began, his voice thick with emotion. I owe you an apology. I shook my head, waving off his words. Dad, you don't have to. He held up a hand, silencing me with a gentle yet firm gesture. No, I do. I was blind, kiddo. Blinded by my own desire to see Aaron happy, to the point where I ignored the warning signs right in front of me. A heavy silence hung between us, the weight of his words settling like a physical presence. You saved us, my girl he continued, reaching out to take my hand in his calloused grip. If it weren't for your vigilance, your unwavering determination to uncover the truth, who knows what depths Nico's deceit might have reached. Tears welled in my eyes as I squeezed his hand, a lifetime of unspoken emotions passing between us in that moment. I did what any sister would do, Dad, I whispered, my voice barely audible. Aaron's happiness means everything to me. Dad's eyes shone with a mixture of pride and relief. I know, kiddo, and that's what makes you so special. In the weeks that followed, the process of healing began in earnest. Erin, slowly but surely, emerged from the depths of her despair, her spirit battered but unbroken. With the unwavering support of our family, she found the strength to pick up the pieces and start anew. And as for Nico, his day of reckoning finally came. The weight of the evidence, coupled with the tenacity of Dean and the legal system, ensured that he would face the consequences of his actions. Though the scars of his betrayal would linger, at least now we could find solace in the knowledge that justice had been served. As I stood on the porch, watching the sun dip below the horizon, painting the sky in a kaleidoscope of colors, I couldn't help but reflect on the journey that had brought us to this point. It had been a harrowing path 
fraught with pain and heartbreak, but in the end we had emerged stronger, our bonds forged anew in the crucible of adversity. And as the first stars began to twinkle in the evening sky, I made a silent vow to never again let doubt or deception darken our doorstep, to protect the sanctity of our family with every fiber of my being. For in the end, that was the true victory. The knowledge that no matter what life threw our way, we would face it together, united in our unwavering love and resilience. 